Hello and welcome to this Tinker Shop tutorial. My name is Martin from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library and today I'm going to show you how to make this neat little reaction time game with the micro bit. So the way this is going to work is you can see the micro bit will randomly display an arrow on the screen and you'll have only a short amount of time to click on the appropriate button that the arrow is pointing to. If you fail to click on a button in time or if you click on the wrong button you'll lose a life and if you click on the correct button you'll score a point. And so once you run out of lives we'll trigger a game over event and the, the game will show you um, your score and so the idea is to you know, get the highest score possible um, by the end of the game and it can be a lot of fun. You can run this and play it just in the simulator like I'm doing here um, but it's also going to be a lot more fun if you have a micro bit and you can um, flash it to the micro bit and play right on that. So let's jump right in and I'll show you how to build this. Okay, so to start, you're going to go to makecode.com and <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of options with make code, um, but we're going to be using the micro bit. So you're going to click on micro bit on the home page and then just click on new project. Give your project a name like reaction game or something. And then here we go, we have a blank brand new project. So um, we're actually gonna be using both these on start and forever blocks. So we'll leave them there. And the first thing that we'll do for this game is just get um, the arrows working. So get the arrows displaying either um, a left facing arrow or a right facing arrow and we're going to need this to be random as well so first let's create a variable that controls which which um, arrow to display so on the left hand side click on the variables drawer and then click on make a variable and so this variable the the value of this variable is going to control the direction of the arrow. So we'll call the variable direction. Let's just type that in and click OK. And then just grab um, this block here that says set direction to zero. And you're going to drag that into our forever loop. If you're not familiar with the forever loop, Basically, everything inside um, this block, it's going to run the code, and when it gets to the end, it'll go back to the top and run it again. So it just loops through all the code forever. Um, so we need to set our direction to you know either you know one of two values. So we'll just we'll make it a number either one or two and then based on this value we'll show either the left or the right arrow so we need to create a random number either one or two um, and so to do that you're gonna click on the math drawer and we're gonna find the, the pick random number block so down here pick random zero to ten drag that into the value for our direction variable and we're going to need, need to change it from 0 to 1 to 1 to 2. So this sets our direction variable to a value of either 1 or 2 and then based on this value we'll show either the left arrow or the right. So let's build that next part. We're going to go into the logic drawer and then grab this if true then and else block. So grab that and just drag it underneath our direction variable. 
And so if our direction value is equal to one, let's say, then we'll show the left facing arrow. Otherwise, or else, we'll show the right facing arrow. So we have to include that first condition here. Um, so go down into the logic drawer and under comparison, grab this block that just says zero equals zero. And so we wanna change this so it says if our direction variable is equal to one. So go back into variables um, and just grab this block that just says direction. Drag that into the first slot of our condition and then change it from zero to one. So the first time this runs, the direction variable will randomly one or two. If it's one, let's make the arrow point to the left. So under basic, we'll grab this show LEDs block and drag that into the first part of our if statement. And this is kind of a neat block. You can just click on the LEDs <clears throat> that correspond to the LEDs on the micro bit and it will display those LEDs on the screen. So if direction is randomly equal to one, it'll show a left facing arrow. And then you can just right click on this and then left click on duplicate. And then under the else part of the statement, we'll just change this to a right facing arrow. So if we run our code, it should randomly just show a left or right arrow. And remember, by the time it gets to the end of this code, it's gonna go back up to the top and loop over and just run this again. So we got randomly left or right facing arrows. So the next part is we'll add in like a short pause so that it doesn't just constantly go left, right, left, right. We need to give the player some time to react, but not too much time, so it's challenging. And then we'll code in um, the button presses. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is track our button presses. And so, um, when a, when a player presses a button, we'll use a variable to track it and we'll assign it a number. So if it presses the A button, we'll change our button variable to one. And if they press the B button, we'll change the variable to two. And by default, um, the button will be set to zero. So let's go ahead before we um, code our button presses, let's create that variable. So go into variables and then click on make a variable and then we'll just call this variable button, okay? And then grab this block that says set button to zero and we'll drag that to the top of our forever loop. So this sets our button to zero and then let's change this value um, based on um, whether the player presses the B or the A button. So go into input and grab this on button A press block and then go back into input and grab another on button A press block. And then on the second one, we're gonna click on the A and change it to B. So this is just tracking um, when the player presses the A button and the B button. So in each of these cases, we'll wanna change the value of our button variable. So go back into variables and grab this set, set button um, to zero block, drag that into our button A press block. And in this case, we will change the value of our button variable from zero to one. 
and then we can just right click and duplicate this block drag that into our button B press block and in this case we'll set the button variable to 2 okay so now that we've um, we've created a variable and we're changing its value based on which button is being pressed or if no buttons pressed um, we can code in the logic um, for what to do um, when each of those buttons is pressed okay so to to detect the correct button press or incorrect button press we're going to grab another if else statement so we're going to go into logic and click on the if else block and then just drag that underneath our other if else statement and so in this first part of the if, if else statement we have to provide it a condition and so the condition we want to check for is if the button that was pressed which is represented by our button variable is equal to the direction that is currently set um, so we want to check if our button variable is equal to our direction variable if that's the case then we will change the score by one. We'll, we'll reward the player with a, another point. Um, otherwise, that'll mean that they didn't press the incorrect button or they didn't press any button. And in that case, we'll take away one of their lives. So actually, the first thing we need to do is add in the lives. So make sure you click on the advanced category here and then go into the game drawer and we need to find the set life block so right here grab set life and drag that into our on start block so when the game starts we will set the lives to let's say three so you have three three chances to get um, the incorrect answer before you lose all your lives and the game's over then we can build out the, our condition here. So under logic, um, go to comparison and grab this zero equals zero block. And as we said before, we need to check if our button variable is equal to the direction variable. So go into variables, grab the button variable and drag that into the first part of this comparison and then go back to variables, grab the direction variable block, and drag that into the second part of this comparison. And so if these two values are equal to one another, then the player clicked the correct button and we'll change the score by one. So go into the game drawer and find the change score by one block and drag that into the first part of our if statement. So if this doesn't happen again, um, so else, that means this didn't happen, this condition wasn't met, so the player didn't click the correct button. So in this case, let's remove a life. So go into the game drawer again, and just grab this remove life block and then put in a value of one. So we'll remove one life. And this is almost done, but we need to give the player a little bit of time to, to make, to, to react and click the, the correct button. Because right now it just shows the arrow and then immediately jumps down here to see which button was pressed. So we need to give a little bit of time for them to actually do that. So we'll go into the basic um, drawer and find the pause block. And we'll set this to about 800 milliseconds. So a little bit less than a second. Um, that'll be challenging enough, but also not giving them too much time, right? 
So at this point, I think our game is complete and it's ready to test out. And so for the best gaming experience, I highly recommend um, downloading this, this project and flashing it to your micro bit to test out and play. Um, for me, in this tutorial, I'm just going to demonstrate on the simulator here. And if you don't have a micro bit, you can just play on the simulator as well. So I'm just going to full screen it. Um, press this A and B button, which simulates um, pressing both A and B at the same time. And this will um, restart the micro bit. And so, oh, I wasn't quite quick enough there. So you can see the different animations for a correct button press versus the incorrect. Let's do it incorrectly again. We get an X. Oh, and I wasn't quite fast enough on that one, so I, it was incorrect again. So you can see we get this game over animation, and then it'll show us our score. There we go, it says score, and then four. So I could probably do a lot better than that. Um, it is a little bit more difficult doing it with the mouse instead of having the physical buttons. Um, but there you go, it's a really fun game. Um, and I think there's a lot of ways you could build on this. Um, if you're finding it too, too easy, you could change this pause time um, to something like 500 milliseconds or even less. Um, you can play around with that to get the difficulty where you want it. Um, you could also try and add like a third option, so displaying um, something else other than a left or right arrow. And maybe in that case, you don't press any buttons. Um, so there, I think there's a lot of things you could do to build on this game. In any case, that concludes this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned something. And most importantly, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.